I've been living in Berlin now for just over three months, so it's not the longest time ever, but it's definitely enough time to gather enough impressions to let you guys know how I feel about living in Berlin as a clear foreigner. Do I like it? Do I want to continue living there? And do I recommend moving there to any of you who are maybe thinking about moving there? Or maybe you just want to know what's Berlin like? I'm gonna come out and say right at the start, I absolutely love it. So far, so good. Obviously, it has its cons like any other city in the world but the pros really outweigh the cons and I'm gonna get right to it and tell you why. I'm gonna have to start with the most obvious one for myself as I am vegan. Berlin is literally vegan heaven. There is vegan food everywhere on every corner there's a vegan restaurant. Veganism is really common and accepted in Berlin so no one really looks at you weirdly if you say you're vegan and when people go out to eat they're very happy to go to a vegan place because they're so used to seeing veganism everywhere that they're like yeah sure let's do it. Or if you go to a regular restaurant, there is always a vegan option. It doesn't matter where, I swear to God, even the meatiest of the meatiest places has a vegan option. A vegan currywurst. It will happen. The great thing about Berlin is that everyone speaks English. Literally everyone. There's even some cafes I've gone to. The people who work in those cafes only speak English. And I found that very, very odd because it's Germany, but it's a thing. So you don't have to worry about communication. If you speak English, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Which is also kind of a con because I'm currently in a process of trying to learn German and that is making it impossible. Every time I try to speak German to someone, they just end up replying to me in English because they can obviously hear I'm not a native German speaker, so they just assume English will be easier and that just means I never learned the damn German language, which is not an easy one to learn, so I'm really trying to learn it. Please speak German to me if you see me in Berlin. So this leads me on to job opportunities in English. There are so so many jobs in English in Berlin. There are so many startup companies looking for people who speak English really well, who only need to speak English. If you go online and search for English speaking jobs in Berlin, I mean, the list really goes on and on and on. Depends what your expertise are. You can find something that's suitable for you. And I promise you, it really is not too difficult to find jobs there that are in English. I do believe that when it comes to rent and housing, there's something for everyone in Berlin, budget wise. You could either choose to live super, super luxury, if that's something you're able to afford, then great. There are crazy places, really nice places, with crazy prices too, but you know, you do you if that's you. But there's also things that are super affordable. You just have to be first very, very lucky in your timing and when you find the place. We were super lucky with our place, but it was really just the timing and constantly just searching looking, being active with that. But we also went for a completely furnished place with all bills included at a pretty decent price. So that can be found. They do have service departments in Berlin because people do come for very short term stays and we didn't want to commit to getting an unfurnished place, which is the case in most places in Berlin, they are unfurnished. But we didn't want to do that because we were very worried about having to leave in maybe a year and having to buy everything and then sell everything. And the stress is just, I'm not about that life. So we just decided to go for a fully furnished place. And honestly, it's been so stress-free and lovely. So if that's something you're into, that is an option. Obviously, if you go for an unfurnished place, there are pretty good deals, I would say. It depends obviously on the location and how smart you are about where you're looking, which websites and things like this. But of course, you're going to have to then always pay for bills on top and your Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing what suits you best. So if you're planning to move to Berlin, get ready to cycle like a lot. You're gonna need a bike because it's pretty much the fastest and cheapest way of transportation. I think so anyway, and I think most people do because there are a lot of cyclists. The good thing is that there are so many bike rental places in Berlin. I'm actually with Swap Feeds at the moment, which is a monthly subscription-based service uh, where you just rent a bike for a month. It's around 20 euros a month. I think 22 because I got a basket. So if you want a basket, it's two euro extra, but trust me for your groceries, you're gonna want that basket. It's completely insured, so you don't don't have to worry about buying a really nice expensive bike and it possibly getting stolen in Berlin because that could very likely happen. It's Berlin. People burn cars in Berlin. Probably don't get a car. I was considering it until I uh, literally was walking down the street and saw some cars just like burnt. 
And I was like, damn, I am not getting that car anymore. Parking is also an absolute nightmare and expensive if you want a garage or a parking area or whatever. So honestly, just get a bike, which can be a con if you're not used to cycling in busy cities. Like me, I'm still very, very terrified of it. The good thing is, is that there are so many cycle lanes. The cycle lanes are insanely good in Berlin. So you'll kind of feel safe, but you'll also kind of not feel safe because there's cars everywhere. And I've also had an accident already. Thankfully, I'm fine, but it was a close one. Get ahead. Helmet. The public transport is good in Berlin. I mean, you've got trams, you've got buses, you've got the S-Bahn, you've got the U-Bahn, you've got cars that you can literally unlock with an app on your phone and just rent them on the street, drop them off, etc., etc. Like, there's so many options. However, unless you're going for the car rental, it can be quite what a process. For example, if you want to get to a location that's literally 10 minutes by bike, it could take you up to 40 minutes by public transport. It'll be like, you need to change this, then you need to change that, you need to get that, and then you need to walk there, and it really builds up. So sometimes it's actually less convenient to take public transport than just cycle. Also, the pricing of public transport is ridiculously expensive. It's outrageous. It's around 64 euro, I think, for a monthly pass. And that's only being able to board the train after 10 a.m. So if you need to be somewhere earlier than that, it's around just under 90 euro for a monthly pass, which I think is pretty pricey when you really calculate that out. Obviously, every single person has a different idea of what expensive means to them. But to me, I think like, I'm just gonna grab my bike. You know what I mean? No traffic, no waiting for trains, a little scary, but I'll manage. But obviously, if you're going somewhere further out, then there is great, great public transportation for that. Berlin is obviously a very, very advanced city with loads of startups. So a great thing about it is that there are so many delivery apps and companies for food and groceries. You've got Gorillas, you've got Bring, you've got... Do they have Deliveroo? I was going to say Deliveroo. I know that's in the UK, but I'm unsure if Berlin also has it. Anyway, it's pretty damn great. And it means that you could always order food online from restaurants and it will come to your place in like 20 minutes and also groceries super convenient you wake up in the morning you're like oh damn i forgot to buy milk or whatever you literally can just order it on gorillas and it will come in 10 minutes to your house or in the evening if you're like tired and you don't want to go out and buy groceries you can use an app so when it comes to those kind of things berlin is super advanced in that and you don't even have to leave your house as i mentioned a lot of people who are freelancers come to berlin and there's a lot of startups going on so there's a lot of people who are kind of doing their own thing and are very creative as well or in the it or tech world which that is also a huge, huge thing. <laughs> meet someone at a bar, you meet someone out, you're like, what do you do? Tech. IT, you'll hear a lot of that in Berlin. But there's also a very creative side of Berlin, creative nerds like me. So there's just a bunch of mixed people and everyone's so easygoing and free and expressing themselves in any way they want. It's really a wonderful city. You get to meet a lot of people because they're very easygoing. It's easy to start conversations, which is actually very rare for Germans usually. <laughs> Germans are socially reserved a lot of the time, but I feel like in Berlin, there's a good mixture of the socially reserved and the very outgoing, easygoing people who wanna chat, wanna build relationships, and make friends. Depends where you are, which area you're in. There's a good mix of both. The last thing I want to mention that I love about Berlin, even though I think this is the case for the whole of Germany, but anyway, packages. If you're not home, your package will get delivered to your neighbor happily and safely. So you're always kind of able to get your package and you don't need to go to some post office. In most cases, your package will be delivered to your neighbor in your apartment building and the same goes for your neighbor's packages will be delivered to you and then you just kind of exchange them when you have time, go knock at their door and your package is safely there. I love that so much. I wish every country did this. They don't, but they should. I'm quickly going to run through the cons now of what I actually don't love so much. It's not a complete deal breaker, but there are some things that you maybe have to take in mind if you're considering moving to Germany. Maybe they'd be deal breakers for you. For me, they're just a little bit annoying, but I mean, I can live with it. First thing is that you have to pay for tap water in restaurants. Sorry, what? That bothers me a lot. I lived in the UK for nine years and not once, not not once did I get charged for tap water in a restaurant. Actually, they were very generous with their tap water in the restaurant. So when I came to Germany, I was actually very shocked that water generally is not given to you for free in a restaurant. And if you even ask for tap water, they will, in most cases, charge you. I got charged one euro 50 for tap water in a restaurant the other day, and I couldn't actually believe the man. I thought he was joking. I thought he was actually like having a joke, but he was serious. And I was like, oh, okay, take my money. 
I was very thirsty. Another thing is that you have to always pay for toilets. Now I understand in some places I completely can agree. But there are places like a mall, for example, where I completely disagree. I think you're already going into a mall. You're already spending so much money in that mall. Give us a free toilet, man. I was in the Christmas market last month. We're paying so much, even an entry fee, then you're paying around all the stalls and then, oh, the toilet also has to be charged. I don't know. I, I don't agree with it. Let me know what you think about it. I wouldn't even say that the toilets are much cleaner than those that aren't charging in other countries. I would say the cleanliness is uh, pretty similar. So I don't know what they're charging for exactly, but it's one thing I do not like about the entirety of Germany. An obvious one is that the tax rates are pretty damn high. Obviously it depends on how much you are earning. Tax is definitely something that is not a cup of tea when it comes to living in Germany. Obviously it comes with other benefits like your health insurance and whatever not. I don't even know. There are literally so many insurances and things in Germany that are covered. Obviously your school is free, etc, etc. But then again, it's still quite frustrating to have such a high tax rate. But the positive of that is obviously that the country is in order. No one needs to be homeless. There are just standards that are fantastic. It's like a pro and a con. Let me know your thoughts on the tax rates in Germany. The older generation in Germany can be slightly rude, especially if you do not speak German. This happens less in Berlin than in other cities that are very populated with the older generation, but it can happen. And I've had some almost fights with some old ladies in Germany because they just haven't been into me. And you know what? Fair enough, I should be speaking German, so I get them. But I don't even think it was a language in one case because I didn't even speak and she was shouting at me. So I think they just don't like the youth so much. And last but not least, I'm gonna end this video with my final note, which is on the current vaccination COVID status situation. It's hard to say if I see it as a pro or a con because this is a very controversial, debatable topic that can be discussed for literally hours. But I will just let you know that the measures are very tight in Germany Entering, I think, is not so bad. I think you can enter either if you're fully vaccinated, if you've recovered from the virus, or you have a negative test. So I think that's fair enough. But when it comes to actually being in Berlin, at least, I know every region in Germany is completely different. You have to pretty much be vaccinated to enter any venue or any place, really. It's really that tight. So that can be really tricky for a lot of people who obviously are not maybe pro vaccinations, but that is just the status of it at the moment. Personally, I think some of it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, for example, if you enter a mall, you can just enter the mall, but then in every single individual store, you need to get checked for your vaccination pass. But in the supermarket, you don't. In drugstores, you don't. So. I'm just saying, some of it really doesn't make sense. But that is the status currently in Berlin. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And that is where I'm gonna leave this video. Those are my first impressions of Berlin. And I'm gonna be there for a longer time. So I'm very excited about it. I will probably do an updated version when I'm living there for a year or two years even, if I stay that long and let you guys know what it's like living long-term in Berlin. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Berlin adventures. I'm actually doing a series where I do weekly vlogs of living in Berlin. So if that interests you at all, then don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned. Every single week there's a new vlog. I will see you in my next video. Bye.